Uh, my name is um, Adamo Suleiman Deko. I'm 29 years old. I'm the co-founder of Beran Crest Nigeria Limited, an agro-based company here in Abuja with branch offices in Kaduna, Kwara, and Niger State. I'm also the chief consultant for three world food projects, one of the foremost companies in sub-Saharan Africa, and I'm also a board member, TSF Global Resources Limited. Thank you very much for having me on the Acha Show. An entrepreneur is someone who is able to translate vision into reality, someone who is able to galvanize both human and material resources in achieving that objective. So an entrepreneur is not just someone that run businesses, it's someone that is passionate about an idea he or she conceives and work tirelessly to achieve that. I, I don't really think you learn entrepreneurship. I don't think so. I think I, I, I think it's something that let, let me just let me let me not conclude like that. I believe it's like you learn it like forty percent. The other sixty percent is you know, most of action, most of the things you learn on the job. So it's not like entrepreneurs are people that just go to schools, have beautiful MD, MBAs, and come out and they become entrepreneurs. It's something most times is in build. You have the, you must have the passion. You must have the ability to identify a problem in a society. And it, when you identify that problem in a society, you try as much as possible to solve that problem. You don't have to like be profit driven, but I can assure you that while, while you are trying to solve that problem, you can now begin to exploit the financial gains that are there. So for entrepreneurship, you need to be on the field, you need to be active, you need to identify that problem you are solving. So if you don't do that, I, I, I don't think you can actually go far in entrepreneurship. As entrepreneurs, we are constantly being reminded that we have responsibility to meet, we have salaries to pay, we have taxes and all of that. So we think about those things too. But I can assure you that it, not all entrepreneurs are super rich, but they are actually very contented following up with their dreams. That's the only reward they have. I believe that when you are doing business, you need to it's failure is part of business. If you don't fail, you cannot learn. Like I'll give you an example. When I started, when we started Baron Crest Agro, we were basically newcomers. It was an all a newcomer um, affairs, and we we made a lot of mistakes, accounting mistakes. But all sorts of mistakes, but I can assure you that you, while we are making this mistake, we try as much as possible to learn so that it will not recall, the, the mistakes will not come again. So I don't believe that once you become an entrepreneur today, the next day you are successful. There are mistakes, there are drawbacks. So you need to prepare for, for this and you must be able to have what we call shock absorbers to, to whenever those drawbacks come in. And when they come in, and you are able to conquer them, it will now invariably position you to even do more. Often the time you would now, if you get to a situation, you now want to question your commitment to your business or whatever enterprise you're managing. You start asking yourself, am I doing the right thing? Uh, am, I on, am I on the right space? Am I, what, what am I doing wrong? Often time, entrepreneurship, they face so many, entrepreneurs, sorry, beg your pardon, they fail many times. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, countless times. But the most important thing is when you fail, you learn your lesson, you improve on your business, and you move on. It invariably makes your business grow. For example, I'll give you from a personal experience I had a few months back. We did a supply contract to a private company in Fontua, and we were to move soya beans from Zamfara. I think about 50 tons of soya beans. That's about one, one and a half trailer of soya beans from Zamfara to Fontua. Before we were able to aggregate all of them in Zamfara, bandit struck, mm -hmm. cutted away our goods, destroyed the remaining, and we couldn't, we lost close to millions of dollars, uh, millions of naira, close to about seven to eight million. And we didn't close shop. So it invariably tells us, okay, we need to do more. 
we need to now start doing insurance to cover up for our, our risks and all of that and it now makes our business even better so as an entrepreneur there will be challenges but how you are able to deal with these challenges and move on is what now makes you a di different from the lot. Some people, when they have one or two failures, they just quit. Entrepreneurs, they don't quit. We move. If you cannot move, we walk. If you cannot walk, we crawl. If you cannot crawl, just find a means not to be static. That's the true spirit of an entrepreneur. When we started, we actually applied for as regards to um, funding from Nigerian government, if there are opportunities where you can access funding, right? Yeah. So when we started, we, we actually worked, we applied for AGMES, they call it AGMES Loan Agricultural, whatever, I've forgotten the full name, but it's AGMES. Then it's financed by NISAR, Microfinance Bank, which is headed by Bankers Committee of the Central Bank. So we applied. I went for a course on entrepreneurship development for two weeks and we issued certificate. We did all the necessary paperwork. We didn't get the 10 million naira loan we actually wow. wanted. But I can assure you, people that were, that are not entrepreneurs, they get close to about 5 billion, 2 million, 3 million, 10 million, 7 million. People that don't even know what entrepreneur is just because they have access and to government people and they enjoy government patronage. So these are some of the issues. This is my personal experience. An entrepreneur, the traits visible. Hmm, okay. Let me just succinctly put it that these traits are what all outside people see. They are what that they are visible. Yeah. Number one is an entrepreneur is someone that never quits. It's someone that is driven by passion. It's someone that is not super rich, but finds contentment in what it does. And another trait of an entrepreneur is, most entrepreneurs you see today are people who have resolved to do things differently. They don't give up. They believe in their ideas. Right. No matter what they, their environment may do to derail that idea, they keep pushing because they believe that there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. The can-do spirit of Nigerian entrepreneurs, I have not seen it in any other part of the world. Wow. Yes. If you survive the entrepreneurship in Nigeria, in you can actually survive. Let me tell you, if you go to Ghana, for example, you have access to 20 hours, 20 hours of um, power. So you can actually power your business for 20 hours from government. If you come to Nigeria, you have to buy fuel or diesel to power for at least for that same 20 hours. So while your colleagues in Ghana have that leverage of access to electricity, you are paying for your own electricity. While your own, um, while our colleagues in Ghana have access to security, then the men don't even pay the security. You are paying heavily on security here. When they have access to finance, you don't have access to finance here. So if you succeed as an entrepreneur in Nigeria, and if you are if you are if you are um, operating an enterprise in Nigeria, ah, if you go outside to other clients, you're gonna top them because the challenges here. Are enormous. are enormous. They are they are they are, they are just there. There's this Nigerian factor. I can't just explain it, but you will always find it in whatever level of enterprise you're managing. There's always the Nigerian factor that you don't see in other societies. Federal government, how do you want the government to actually do much to promote entrepreneurship? Yeah, yeah. Number one is I believe there should be what we call um clusters. There should be entrepreneurial clusters. Entrepreneurial clusters is a place where you could easily move or walk into and you find people of like minds coming there more or less to, to, to talk about their business, more or less to chill, more or less to discuss business, more or less to operate business. For example, they can set up an entrepreneurial um, cluster for, let's say, agro aggregator. An agro aggregator is someone that supplies agro commodities 
to food processing companies and the final consumer. Now, if the Nigerian government have a cluster for agro aggregators in let's say in the 36 states of the federation what that implies is we come for aggregators that are within the fct we have a cluster where we could come we gather we we'll go there they can provide offices for us we rent even if it's a, a plaza then if we are discussing loans if we want to assess government funding we can now come together and assess it as a group distribute it among ourselves and operate, share ideas. So by by, by, by setting up close, um, entrepreneurial clusters, you are bringing these entrepreneurs together, you are, you, are, you are harnessing their potential and you are supporting them. I think that that's the way to go. Have I felt like quitting in my entrepreneurial journey? Over a million times I have like sometimes i feel like i normally calculate people's salaries and be like oh my god if i work in social organization i earn 250 a month 250 oh my god, this is what i will be earning but huh, entrepreneurship is so it's an an accurate tax so over time i feel yeah i have this motion let's just truly suleiman just quit do something else and all of that but what has kept me is the people my idea has been able to bless hundreds of farmers that are now enrolled in the Baron Crest Agro Agriculture program that we are empowering in our local communities training them on agriculture modern techniques on how to improve their yields our staff if we quit what now becomes of them it's it's, it's, it's so if I look at most of those things, I, I feel like, no, don't quit. But it's the, 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 the thought of quitting is a real current decimal in the life of any entrepreneur is there. Even Dangote full-time feels like quitting. Yeah. So I believe that if you now look at how far you've gone, and you now start thinking of where you want to go, I think you will have to be rejuvenated again that you don't have to quit. In entrepreneurship, if you cannot run, you move. If you cannot move, you crawl. If you cannot crawl, find any means possible not to be stagnant. No matter the amount of salary someone is offering me to come work for him or her tomorrow, I can tell you I will not. Even if it's one million dollars, I will not. Because number one, I'm not driven by monetary gains. That's my kind of person. I feel today I was speaking to my assistant where then I got a call that oh oh my god one of our proposals scaled through. I, 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 I became elated. So as entrepreneurs, as an entrepreneur, once you believe that your ideas are coming into reality, you become fulfilled. It not, I'm not really driven by monetary gain. I'm driven by the problems in this society and how to solve it. If anything comes out from it, fine. For example, when I wanted to eat out in one of those A-class um, fast food joints, and I saw someone wearing suits, corporate, selling more and more on the street. So I was surprised. And I was like, oh my God, this guy is selling more and more. He's from corporate. I actually, I didn't go out to eat there. I bought it from him. We interacted and that's how I ate more and more for that day. So you can't tell me that guy is not an entrepreneur. So right from the woman that sells a car, they have a budget there or not. They'll tell you this is how much I'm buying beans. This is how much I'll use on grounded. This is how much it will cost me to buy expired newspaper to wrap their car. So all of those people, they are geniuses. So entrepreneurship is not defined by how large your output and production is. It is defined by your structure, be it small, medium, or large. If you have a structure and it works for you and you are consistent with that idea then you are running an entrepreneurial um wow. yes someone can actually master entrepreneurship you you're not going to tell me that when it comes to agro aggregating agro commodity supplies or anything agriculture barrancrest agro is a novice no we've done it before 
we are not going to say uh, when it concerns cement that Angote doesn't know what is in. They have mastered this over time. And you don't master something you don't do. So mastering is part of entrepreneurship. You need, you need to master whatever you do to become an expert. And once you become an expert, you now become very, very successful in that field. And people will now start consulting you. People will now start asking you questions. Even government will now start relating to you when it comes to that field. So anything you are doing, whether you are selling corn in the road, you know how to do it very well. Whether you are selling a car, you know how to do it very well. Whether you are providing hospitality solutions, just like Nias Event Center and Suites, you know how to do it very well. So it's, it means it requires mastering. If you don't have it, you, your enterprise may likely suffer. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for everything. I appreciate it. I will look forward to have you here next time. I will. I will be available anytime and any day you call on me, I will come. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on Achar Talk Show. Thank you very much to Nia Center for making this to happen. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.